Picking up some of the parts here and I found another problem. Notice this side here, all the black on this side. And look at the head, all the black on this side. Looks like we had a leaky head gasket going on. Another reason to tear her down. Onward and upward. I've cleaned the bearings already. Now I'm putting some penetrating oil on them. To get them loosened up nicely. As you can see they are doing. Not perfectly quiet. But for our purposes, I think it's going to do just fine. And I think what we're going to do now, now that we've got them all loosened up nicely, we're going to take a little bit of motor oil. I'm going to squirt a little motor oil in here. See how quiet that makes it? Squirt some oil down in here. And I can tell you they were a lot stiffer than this before. It's no crunchy sounds anymore. And I might even squirt a little bit of STP on there so that when we assemble it, it'll have plenty of lubrication until it gets normally lubricated by the oil in the gasoline. Okay, I've done some preliminary cleaning on this carburetor and uh, now it's time to take it apart and see what we have inside. And so I can clean it out better inside. I don't have any uh, carburetor cleaner that I can soak it in. Uh, that's pretty interesting. We'll have to make sure we get that nicely cleaned. See if I can get it over here where you can see it. This is our emulsion tube and also would appear to be our get it to focus. There we go. And you can see that's plugged up down in there. So that wouldn't work very well, would it? And this is not surprising. I kind of expected this to be happening. Like I said, I have no idea of the history of this motor. Um, I bought, oh, I don't know, five or six or seven motors. Uh, an older gentleman, I'm going to say an older gentleman, he's probably the same age as me, back in Dodge Center, was getting ready to move, and he was clearing out a bunch of stuff, and I had been to a couple of yard sales of his and bought some things from him, and uh, so he stopped by, he was going to take these engines to the scrap yard. Well, there's a good thing right there. not collapsed that's a very good thing whether it floats or not that's another thing but the, it looks like the, uh, the needle valve is not stuck in there that's a good thing and it's not well I've been cleaning it a little bit so it's not really dirty inside but I haven't cleaned inside you saw me just take the cover off of it so it's not really bad in there seen a lot worse I could tell you yeah I need a little it's like probably this probably is going to be like three eighths or five sixteenths is our metering valve metering a uh, fuel mixture adjustment valve I guess what I should call it you can see where it sit down against the seat in there and get a wrench to take this right off and 
three eighths, and that's way too big. And there's five sixteenths, which was my first guess. You heard me say it. And this is a fuel shutoff. There's also one on the gas tank, but this is a fuel shutoff for the um, float and the fuel thing. It appears to be in pretty good condition. This needs to be cleaned really well. Yep. Happy so far with what we're seeing. Let's take the snorkel off of the here. to buy some more carburetor cleaner because I've been using a lot of it cleaning up the other parts and uh, I still got to get my sand blaster cabinet hooked up mm. that's got some gobbly gook in there but it's not real bad not unexpected that's where the air filter sits on can look here at our throttle body and that's the uh, let me see is that the choke I think that is the choke yeah that's the choke there and it could be freed up a little bit more but it's not frozen that's a good thing and then turn it around this way and uh, here's our actual throttle butterfly and it's not in bad shape either it's pretty clean in there so I think we'll just uh, finish disassembling this I'm gonna have to do some squirting down in these couple of holes here I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to try and get the rest of the paint off of it because I would like to once I get it back together rather than painting it orange um, cause this is pretty much going to be a stationary engine um, and try and make it look pretty don't you know pretty yeah that should be stiff like that and I'm glad it is and this is pretty free and I'm glad for that so carburetor cleaner will get most of this paint off of here um, and that would be a good thing. The only thing I have left to do here now is to test the float and see if it does. It's called a float because that's what it's supposed to do. Get out of there. And let me see, what have I got? I can float it in. Let's see if it floats. Oh yeah, look at that, she's floating. Floating just dandy. And I don't see any bubbles coming up, so that's a good thing. So we're happy with that. Well, I've got the carburetor soaking here now in some purple power. And it wasn't all coming off with a carburetor cleaner. I don't want to waste a whole can of carburetor cleaner. So uh, I had some purple power right here. And uh, in fact, it hadn't even been opened yet. And I know model builders, plastic model builders, cars, they uh, often you call what they call the purple pond, which is just purple power cleaner. And they'll use it to strip paint off of model cars that the paint job didn't come out right, or they get an old model that has bad paint on it and they want to rebuild it. They put it in the purple pond to strip it down and start over again. So that's what we're going to try with the carburetor. And if that works, then we might use it on some of these other parts like this that I don't really want to get into using the sand blaster on. Um, and I've been cleaning other parts, and you can see this here, 2604. 
and that corresponds with the number here on the crankcase 2603 and that one says Alcoa now I'm assuming that that's what this one says I can't really read it but it makes sense so whatever that means I have no idea and I've started cleaning the head I've got to do more wire wheeling in there and uh, I'm probably going to sandblast that and sandblast that and what else did I do I oh yeah I cleaned this up it's still not dry completely of course it's uh, broken pretty bad so it's too bad it would be cool to have that uh, neat translucent oil filter air oil air bath oil filter on there wouldn't that be cool and uh, you saw me pulling the carburetor all apart and I have the piston cleaned up here and I have it soaking in some carburetor cleaner and um, trying to get the last piston ring loosened up the top one and the bottom ones are both loose now it's just the uh, uh, middle one that is stuck on one side so I get it soaking in there hopefully we'll get it to uh, come loose so the question you're going to ask me is did it work well let's take a look and see purple power you can see it's bubbling it doesn't just float off but it is coming off with a little bit of scrubber not quite the same as paint stripper I guess but I wouldn't want to use paint stripper on my carburetor probably you couldn't see much in the clip that I did of trying to sandblast this thing I got a couple issues going on one of them being that the sand in my sandblaster has gotten damp actually wet I would say on one corner so I'm gonna have to empty that out clean it out and get some fresh sand um, yep it was out there when it was uh, raining before I got things covered up properly but I've been trying to get this uh, fuel shut off off of here and I'm not sure if it may be actually soldered right in as there is solder and notice there is also some brass right there so somebody's done brazing on this so if I'm gonna save this thing I'm probably gonna take it all apart including unsoldering this unit right here which I'm not going to touch because it's hot I just was heating it up trying to just loosen it up enough to turn it out but it's not brass if it had been brass it would have come out but it obviously is steel and uh, I've been sandblasting around as much as I could with my sandblaster not working quite right but you this thing is terribly heavy and you can see where there's actually a crack right there and it looks like there might even be a crack around the brass and who knows what this is down in here so to get it and see if I can fix it uh, I did find another tank online uh, for 25 bucks which is not a horrible price but it's pretty nasty inside and it has a broken mount on it this part down in here it actually this end right here is split and cracked across which that wouldn't be hard to fix either but if I'm gonna spend 25 bucks for something that needs more work why not put a little more effort into this and see if I can fix this worst comes to worst I'll just put a different kind of gas tank on it 
like I said before, this isn't going to be a perfect restoration. It's going to be more like a uh, get it running and make it look good. You know what I mean? I know some purists might think it's terrible, but oh well. And I have been working on cleaning parts. As you can see, my carburetor is pretty well cleaned up. I got a little bit more with some small wire brushes to get down in the corners because I want to get this totally clean of all the paint off of it. As I said before, I would like to clear coat it. And uh, I have been working on some of these parts, some more. I actually have, and this is just from soaking it in purple power, um, getting a fair amount of, of the crud off in there using a wire we brush on it too I still got more to do as you can see and now that I get my sandblaster hooked up I may just uh, put some tape across the inside of the um, cylinder here and uh, sandblast this part in here keep the sand out of the cylinder bore but yep got that cleaned up I um, Took this part off here, which also goes to the carburetor. The carburetor actually bolts to this, and this bolts to the side of the crankcase. And uh, I get that stripped down and pretty well cleaned up. That goes on here and mounts right like that. And then the carburetor mounts on here. Well, it hasn't come loose yet, so. I'm going to try it soaking in the Barry Lynn's carburetor cleaner and see if that'll help it a, a little bit, maybe loosen things up. That's where we're at today. This is uh, Thursday, and I'm picking at it a little bit at a time. Today was the day for changing oil on my vehicles. Just got that one done a little bit ago. And I did my HHR as well. Hope you all are doing well. And uh, glad to be in Tennessee where it's warmer. Yeah, warmer. Today's December the 12th, I think. And that says it's uh, almost 50. It was up above 50 earlier. It's cooling down now because it's four o'clock in the afternoon but uh yep much warmer here than it is in minnesota i got a text message yesterday from my pastor friend back in minnesota telling me it was five below zero and he said he didn't think god intended for us to live in that kind of temperatures and i said nope he intended us to live in the south and he said well i don't know about that but he intended me to be here at this point in time anyway. Seven years in Minnesota was enough for this boy. Thanks for watching, for commenting, and for subscribing. Till next time, bye for now.